शुरू करू गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू द फेपकॉन 2022 आई एम वैद्य ईशा नानल एंड टुडे आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट यकृत दैट इज लिवर एंड सम ड्रग्स व्हिच आर यूज्ड इन लिवर डिसऑर्डर्स एंड विद स्पेसिफिक रेफरेंस टू पुनानवा मंडूर आई एम गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद माय टॉपिक सो बिफोर गोइंग अहेड further uh, in detail about yakrut and uh, the topics further i would like to tell you that this complete presentation i have tried to compile in such a manner where you would understand that how the basic principles or the basic uh, subjects which are being taught to you in first year are important to understand any topic or any disease in ayurveda so keeping that thought process uh, why sanskrit language is important and how this plays an important role in understanding the definitions or paribhashas given by our, our sahityakars then what basic siddhantas play an important role to understand the functioning or the uh, uh, understand the functioning of the uh, certain uh, organ or how this process is taking place so to understand the basic concept behind it you need to understand the uh, siddhants given in there then about sharir rachna sharir kriya then how doshas play an important role how they are uh, developed or what functions they do and how this vitiation of these doshas uh, land up in uh, multiple kind of disorders then what are the functions of the dhatu which all dhatus are involved in a particular disease or to understand that organ what are the malas which are produced and has to be eliminated what role they perform in uh, understanding that disorder and the padartha vikyan so moving ahead if you will see that uh, first we will decode the word yakrut in sanskrit so many a times lot of student feel that what is the need and what is the necessity to under learn the language the sanskrit language and why it plays such an important role so like any other language uh, any word which is formed in uh, sanskrit language play, uh, tells a story behind that word how that word is formed what is the action or what is the function of that word it it comprise it comprehenses or it comprises of all the functioning of that word so with that one word you can completely understand the complete topic so if you will uh, see that the name is also that much important and how that uh, how the vyutpatti or how it is placed in a sentence will describe what functioning uh, or that word is or uh, uh, what they want to represent or what functions they are doing in that particular uh, sentences so if you see yakrut yakrut is divided into two words ya and krut so ya in the literal meaning of ya in sanskrit language is gatatu that means it is it represents motion so it is a verb which signifies that there is a specific action or the motion it is happening and that motion is happening in a continuous state and krut means chedan so chedan here means that there is constantly there is breaking down there is cutting or there is some conversion which is happening constantly in in that uh, in the process in, in that c2 in that place so the two words collectively it shows there is a constant motion it can be from left to right or right to left so either something is coming from outside to inside or it is something is being sent from inside to outside so it is a bilateral movement which is constantly happy happening and the various entities are coming within something is coming within it is being processed it is being modulated it is being changed from one uh, substance to the another substance and the new form of this substance is being produced or it is being sent into the body 
to do a specific kind of function. So it is really very important to understand that what now uh, with in terms of Yakrut, we'll understand ki what is coming in, what all things are coming in, how they are, how it is being changed, and what new things or new product is being formed, and it is sent in the body. So thus, liver is such an instrument of the body which is responsible for continuously accepting various stimuli. Here, there can be stimuli from rakta dhatu or from rasa dhatu or from ahar ras. And then further, it is being converted or it is being modulated in such a form that it can be adopted by the body for the various functioning and uh, for the development of the body. So, if we see liver, it has a ceaseless activity. That is the hallmark of liver. It is a uh, not a uh, voluntary movement. It is an involuntary movement where continuously liver is functioning. And this functioning is happening with the instrument that is called Agni. With the help of this Agni, this functioning is happening. And this constant work is going on. So, if we'll see, Yakrut is a mool sthan for Raktavaha Srotas. As we can uh, see in uh, Rachna Sharir, it is said, Garbhasya Yakrut Kliyano Shonita Jo. Means that Yakrut is a matru javya. So, the development of liver, liver develops from Rakta Dhatu. And this Rakta Dhatu is specifically in the embryological state is taken from matruj bees from matruj rakta dhatu uh, majorly so for any embryo to have a healthy yakrut or the functioning of the yakrut depends on the quality of matruj bees which is coming to the progeny and how it is functioning how well it is functioning we can totally understand that uh, if the mother is having a healthy yakrut and the functioning of the liver is perfect and the, and the Rakta Dhatu uh, Sarata is there, then only you will see a healthy and a well performing liver. So, this Yakrut, which is, which is developed from the Rakta Dhatu of Matruj bees, it inherently binds the Agni. So, the, the Pitta Dosha, which is produced in this Yakrut, this Pitta dosha is bounded with the agni for the function of metabolism in the liver. So this, the, fun, the first basic function of liver is to bind this agni to the pitta dosha so that the further metabolic activity of the body can be performed by the pitta. Then this pitta, which is being bounded by the agni, is this pitta acham udiriyate. So this acha pitta, this good quality or healthy pitta or prakrut pitta is produced at the time of amla avastha park. Out of three avastha park, in amla avastha park, this prakrut pitta is being developed in yakrut. And the last is uh, the raktamal pitta is also produced as a byproduct which is of malaswaru, which is to be thrown out of the body. And uh, this, during the syn this synthesis of rakta dhatu, this mal is being produced. And if the uh, quantity of this rakta mal pitta is more, then we definitely land up into uh, some other uh, liver problems, which we'll be uh, talking about it further. Now, how this rakta dhatu, how this, uh, the formation of rakta dhatu in Yakrut, so we see that Rakta Dhatu is, is produced in Yakrut. So the Ahar Ras, now the Ahar Ras which is coming is, is from, the pro, uh, from the food which we intake. So the first Ahar Ras, this Ahar Ras is accepted by Yakrut. And then in this Yakrut, there are different stages of uh, conversion. So the Ranjakpit, the Jalagni, and the Agni Agni. This helps into the in conversion of this Ahar Ras into Acha Pitta and uh, Saraktamal. Raktamal. 
so they, these three act in different stages of transition so it is not they are acting in the at the same time at the specific time at every stage one of the this constituent is working and it is helping in in the conversion of rasa to rakta this transition they these individually process different components during the transition and go on binding different components so the the process is step by step so it is uh, ahar ras it is converted into something and then it is converted into something else and these uh, all these three agnis are working and then the final by product is formed and this by product is uh, then again thrown out in the body to perform various functions so achar harit he says he, he says that this process of tra transition of ahar ras into final rakta dhatu is done in seven stages and these seven stages can be characterized with seven different colors of transition and then the final color of rakta dhatu is achieved which is fresh red color so this type of so this transition which is happening so if you will uh, remember the siddhanta the uh, basic siddhantas you have read about pilu pak and pitter pak so this kind of transition which is happening on aharas and which is being converted into rakta dhatu is a typical example of pilu pak in which the conversion of uh, is at the molecular level of from rasa to rakta this process requires a total time duration of 3015 kal that is 514 day so it takes this much after the food is ingested in the body